Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Nana Akeze, and this is Nigerian Mindset. A healthy nation is a worthy nation. But first, here are my viewers. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen in anyone's life. Hope, in my view, is medicinal and antidote to hopelessness. So hope is a remedy to hopelessness. Generally, hope is a feeling of desire and expectation that things will go well in the future. Okay? So when you have hope, you are having that feeling that something good is going to happen in the future. So you can feel good about that. And speaking about future, it is already established that youth are the future of any nation. All right? Indeed, youth often associated with vibrancy. They are often associated with vibrancy, joyfulness, enthusiasm, and passion. And that is youth for you. So, any nation which fail to invest in the youth of its youth, right, is a doomed nation. You heard me, doomed nation. If you fail to invest in the future of the youth in your nation, you are already doomed because youth are the future of any nation. So, youth need hope. Nigerian youth in particular need reassurance of hope in the Nigerian society. The Nigerian youth need assurances that things will get better, okay? And that's all they need because they are the future of Nigeria. With assurance of hope, people can restructure and structure their lives in anticipation for great things to happen in the future. When you have hope, it's when you structure your life around that, right? The absence of hope is hopelessness. You see all this jungle justice that is happening in Nigeria. Youths, please listen. I get it. I get the hopelessness in the system. You don't need to kill anyone for stealing a minor thing like phones and anything pursuing the person, mobbing the person, killing. You don't need to do that. I get it. That is hopelessness. Okay? When things like that happen, hand that person over to the appropriate authority. You don't need to kill anyone for stealing a phone or, you know, pickpockets and all that. It's not a good thing to do that. But you have to know that the hopelessness in the system is making the youth to do that. So you cannot kill yourself for that. Please, the idea that you just run after someone and kill the person for stealing a phone is absurd. I get your frustration. And that's the reason, some of the reasons why I'm running this program. So hope is coming. Stop the jungle justice, okay? So if there is hope in sight, it gives needed energy to everyone for more adventure. So I get that. So when youth in a nation have hope, things happen for good. You can't see anyone killing anyone here in the U.S. just for stealing a phone. That's just misdominion. They will hand that person over to the appropriate authority. So don't kill anyone for stealing a minor thing. Don't even kill anyone at all. Just hand them over to the uh, appropriate authority. In contrast, the absence of hope is hopelessness. It is that situation no one should ever be in. That situation no one should ever be in it. That there's no hope. And it's a big problem within the Nigerian society. Hopelessness is the order of the day in Nigeria. Hopelessness leads to tragedy Tragedy, chaos, and brutalization, like killing for minor thing, is because of hopelessness. Criminal activities and orders, just to mention a few. So, Nigerian leaders, please listen carefully. The youth of Nigeria desperately need hope. 
And it's time to give them that reassurance. Give them the reassurance that it's going to be all right. Do you remember when security used to be a poor man's problem in Nigeria? Some people warned, but no one listened, right? Security used to be the problem of, of poor men. In fact, our revered leader, Chief Obafemi Awolowo, told leadership then that the children of the poor deprived education shall come after those those of you the big men please ladies and gentlemen is security still just the poor guys concern in nigeria my guess is no so like the voice of one crying out from the wilderness i join my voice to ask you all once more put action in place to guarantee youth let them know it's going to be okay put action in place that will signify that invest in the nigerian society leaders of nigeria hope is what drive youth most of the worship houses you see a lot of youths there, right? Looking for answers to many questions in their minds. They want to know the right way to do things. How dare people take advantage of these innocent minds? They come for succor and solace to issues affecting their lives and that of their families. That's the reason why they go to all these worship houses, okay? It is reported already, and many of us have seen it, that some youths, out of many frustration, engage in abrasion. Right? And so, the idea that some men and women who should be guide and mentor, mentor these young fellows, some who even stand on the pulpit, proclaiming to be servant of God, take advantage of of that situation and turn it around to be a money-making business ventures is devastating it is devastating to say the least we have witnessed many on our people take it too far against people of the pews on our nigerian worship houses please let some common sense reign once more it is time already it is time already People have prayed. I believe in prayers and I believe in gathering because when you gather, things happen. I truly believe in that. And I also believe in looking up to maybe men of God or women of God to help you build your faith because there are some times that things are really happening in your life. You're looking for someone to look up to. So now is the time to come back to normalcy. This is critically important. Many years ago, when we came to the U.S., we were going to a Nigerian church. Where the, right now, you know, most of the churches is my own church and all of that that they do. I have no problem about that. But I just need them to come out and teach the real world. The woman, which is, of course, the wife of the man, came out in the, in the, in the hall and said, Oh, if you want something from God, you need to bring your paycheck and put it in, uh, you know, put it on the altar because I did and things happened. I just look at the other person next to me. I'm like, what is she even talking about? So the only way God can hear you is to bring out your paycheck and put it on the altar and then go home. Then what? It doesn't make sense. This person that is saying this is their church, right? When you put the paycheck, who is the paycheck coming to? It's coming to your pocket. So you cannot tell people to do things that you know that is not true. So you need to come out and speak the truth. The Yoruba adage says that there are two sides to a coin, right? And there are two people who either you that is lying know that you are lying or the person that you are lying to know that you are lying. 
So, I mean, you just cannot come out and say things like that. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't always have to be money. I know that in the text, there are so many religious texts that will support that. But at the time that happened, that is not the time we are now. So you need to teach the real message that make real sense. Because you are not Jesus, right? You are not Jesus. If Jesus did it then, it's a great thing that happened at that time, at the situation. Don't tell people to bring all their money before things happen. I don't believe in that, that you have to give God something before God gives you something. I don't believe in that. These practices need to be discouraged, not through criticism, in my view, but pointing them to possible solutions. It's time for our political and religious leaders to rise against this problem. To our religious leaders, please, many of who are now GEOs, hear this once more. The Nigerian society now need your help in other areas of economy, okay? They need your help in other areas of economy. I believe in this titan. You see this titan thing they are talking about and donations. I believe in it. If. There's a big if there. We will come back to that some other time. So it is time you diversify divest or invest as the case may be in real business invest in real business that we create employment for your youths for our own youth in nigeria so it's time for us to you know divest into that in my view nigerian youth have prayed i believe that they have prayed the nigerian people have prayed every one of us have prayed and with no doubt, our prayers has been answered. I believe in going to the church or mosque, people gather. When people gather and pray in the name of God, things happen. So I truly believe that people to go to church or mosque to pray or anywhere you choose to go. But, you know, just go and pray in the name of God and things will happen. Some of you on the pupil are now very worthy. There's no doubt about that. Some even fly private jets around the globe from doing the religious business. Right? We may now all agree that this is a sign that prayer has been answered. I believe that. Okay? Prayers have been answered. You are now okay. You are rich. Now, it is time for Nigerian leaders and GEOs to invest in doctor's offices and urgent care centers across the nation. Doing so, we bridge the gap between visits to big hospitals and catching illnesses at the start before it grows. It's not everything that is spiritual. Some people have high blood pressure without knowing and they just fall down and die and you just say something, whatever happened. Of course, I understand the spiritual aspect of all of that, but it's not everything that should be connected to all of that. So we need doctor's offices and urgent care centers when you go there that's when they will discover what is going on with you and give you the appropriate medication before they can send you to specialists or big hospitals for xyz please invest in real business now this is the time to invest in doctor's offices and urgent care centers there are some smart ways you can start giving back to the society these are some smart ways you can give back to the society. Give youth example to follow through your actions like other leaders do around the world. For example, in the United States, we are talking about now Michael Bloomberg. Michael Bloomberg was a former New York mayor, okay? He is a businessman. He engages in real business. So it is time for you to divert and go into real business. You have made money. Michael Bloomberg could have afforded to build the world's largest auditorium for religious money. Because he's not a, a pagan. He's, he has a religion. So he could have afforded to build the highest. 200 capacity or even 1 million capacitor, capacity to sit down. To be collecting money for business. He didn't do that. 
again recently he gave 1.8 billion for college financial aid to help students get admissions who are qualified to get admission but from low income family these are how you give back you give back to the society this is the reason why america is great fellow nigerians and leaders of nigeria a working healthcare system should be a must have in nigeria this should not be an issue to disagree on or push aside in my view is a big way for you to start making money investment so it truly amazes me to know that with all the resources wealth and wedding in the 21st century in our nation in nigeria nigerians are still being admitted in the hospitals for days and weeks and for minor sicknesses we don't need to do that build doctor's offices and urgent care centers across the nation leaders of nigeria you can do this in addition sponsor final year medical students in universities of your choice work with the school authority to bring in expatriate and consultant to train these young graduates that is how you keep the brains in Nigeria. Engage them. Not only teaching people how to pray. Faith without action is zero. So you need to put action into it now. You cannot train all these medical doctors, right? And employ them. Those urgent care centers that you have built, doctors would have rented them and be paying back to you. They are renting, they are not renting for free. So instead of engaging in how to look for, how to build more capacity of an auditorium that will take uh, 2 million people at once, it doesn't make sense anymore. Those are all overflowed. It doesn't make sense. We know how to pray. People are praying. Things are happening. This is the time for you to start giving back to the country. Leaders of Nigeria, it should not continue to be this way. The idea that some leaders are taking the resources from Nigeria system to overseas into already established countries is ludicrous indeed. We are willfully destroying the future of our country. We need to stop that. We truly need to have a rethink. We need to, we need to have a, re, a think of that. How do you take money from our underdeveloped country and stack it up in pseudonyms around the globe? It's unbelievable. Please note carefully that if anything would happen to you, even your children, your children will not be able to retrieve these loots. What a waste. Tell me, why would anyone feed the urge to deplete from the less privilege and continue to do so year in year out decades after decades it's unbelievable we need to start thinking of a way out we need to invest in Nigeria keep the youth engaged I hope I have made some valuable point to some leaders today thank you for joining me today Please join me in my next episode for continuation of our discussion on this series and issues in Nigeria with possible solution. My website, as always, is standybyyourdream.com. Please check out some of our books. This book, Cultural Adversity and Making of a Scholar. This you can find it on the internet. And these are some of our research books can be found all over the world on the internet and you can also buy it on Amazon these are some of our research books and these are some of our articles it can be found on the research gates and this is my book you can read it growing up African girl child in eight circle of which the second version will soon be out and I thank you for joining me today, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.